here they are, my 10 niche fragrances for life and chuck away the rest tag. Thank you very much for my tag. Uh, I was tagged by two people, Lola Sense and also Kristin from Beauty Meow. So here are my 10 niche fragrances for life. I hope you enjoy. Morning, so in at number 10, this is a fragrance I can't see myself living without. It serves a purpose and I wear it quite often. And it is none other than Aqua de Palma's Colonia Essenza. I love this fragrance. Sometimes I crave this fragrance. It makes me feel clean and groomed to within an inch of my life, if that makes any sense. It's a really rounded citrus fragrance, but it just feels like a super concentrated citrusy melange, shall we say. It just smells so clean and it lasts all day long. And I love smelling it on Dan, Mr. Smelly, but I also really enjoy wearing it myself. Today is a perfect day to wear it because I got up late, half an hour late. I managed to have a shower, luckily, but there has been no cup of coffee and I need to leave for work now. So I need something that makes me feel awake. It's very uh, zesty and lively and refreshing and it's also extremely professional. So I think it works great in the work environment. So that is my number 10 fragrance, Colonia Essenza. Let's spray it on. And you get loads out of that sprayer. So I'll do the other arm off camera and then I've got to rush to work and hopefully make myself a coffee the minute I get in the door. So I thought I would update you on this little beauty. I've been wearing it all day. It's now just after 5 p.m. So it's given me an excellent performance today. I kept thinking I was smelling Chanel Coco Mademoiselle, which is kind of a strange comparison and I've never made it before, but I honestly kept thinking all day long, I'm sure someone's wearing Coco Mademoiselle around me. And I realized actually this fragrance does give off a similar vibe to that. And I have spotted the florals that do come out in the dry down. So what happens with the fragrance is it gets sweeter and as it dries down, you do start to notice floral elements of it, but it's not overtly floral. It's just that it does have that kind of light and airy floral vibe along with those citruses and the sort of woody, mossy background. Really excellent fragrance, so it's definitely in my top 10. Hi, yeah, so my fragrance for tonight and absolutely one that must be on my list is 4,160 Tuesdays and it's called Rome 1963. So. This is my fragrance for just relaxing indoors. Got an evening ahead of me on my own. It's Friday night, but I can't have a drink because I'm still on call for work, unfortunately. So Rome 63 is all about white florals and tobacco and it's resinous and very musky. It has a real vintage edge to it. It's romantic, it's sexy, it's calming very unisex actually despite the white florals there is tuberous in here but um, it's not too noticeable which is good because i'm not a fan of tuberous but i don't really pick it out to me it just smells like a, a melody of white florals and it's beautiful but completely balanced by quite a strong tobacco note and also there is a note of chocolate just a tiny tiny little hint you really have to look for it to understand that it's there but it's beautiful and i will always want to have this one in my collection that's why it's on this list hiya it's three in the afternoon and it's saturday and i'm off to a beer festival it's being held in an oast house and i'm going to walk there it's about 20 30 minute walk away from me and mr smelly will be joining me later but for now, my fragrance that I'll be wearing is definitely in my list of fragrances, niche fragrances for life. And it is none other than 1861 Renaissance from Zerzhov. This is perfect for a day like this because it has a very casual but so fresh feel to it. So it's still, you know, it's 3 p.m. So it's pretty hot today it's a lovely sunny summer's day 
so definitely requires something that's lighter and fresher and this is just fruity there's a bit of mint in there to make it really lift and just make it refreshing and oh let's spray my arm I'll be using it almost like a body spray because I think with a light fragrance you can do that and then what will happen do another spray what will happen is come uh, evening time I'll reapply something else so I'll apply something completely different for the night time but this today is just perfection there's citruses but there's also to me there's other fruits in there I can't quite put my finger on what they are and there's a depth to it so there's a slightly sweet musky woodsy base in there as well the fragrance does give me a full day's wearing but it doesn't need to give me that today it just needs to give me a few hours before I apply my nighttime fragrance so I'm off to have fun so following the beer festival in the evening my choice of fragrance was this one here which is le plus beau jour de ma vie from Golan what that means in French is the best day of my life and it's supposed to be based on a wedding fragrance so you have the smell of the flowers orange blossoms also sugared almonds it's a very sweet fragrance perhaps a little too sweet for some people maybe even me sometimes but I do truly love it it's very very clean and innocent there's nothing in there to make it naughty or edgy it's just one of those when you're feeling the need for something sweet and clean and just plain beautiful then this is the one it's really excellent performance it really does get noticed even hours and hours after applying it I did once get a compliment from a lady that was serving ice cream in a little uh, cafe at the end of a night out so uh, she said your perfume is beautiful so it is a really gorgeous fragrance it's what I chose to wear for the evening at the beer festival and then we went off to another pub because I got a bit sick of beer but it was a fun evening and I smelt bloody beautiful probably a lot better than most of the people at the beer festival who were middle-aged men with beer guts except of course for Mr Smelly who doesn't have a beer gut so in at six is Atelier Cologne Pomelo Parody. I cannot live without this one. I'm off now, it's uh, evening time and I'm off to meet friends just for a couple of drinks. Nothing major because I can't have an actual drink. I'm driving and I'm also on standby for work which means I could get called in at any moment. So just a little bit of a catch up with some girly friends and what I love about Pomelo Parody is how it starts off so vibrant and zesty and super fresh in a kind of sour bitter sharp way but with the sweetness at the same time and then as it dries down it gets a little bit sweeter it feels like there might be a touch of vanilla in there and there's definitely some other things going on it's slightly woody slightly musky this is not probably the most interesting fragrance in my collection but I just love the way it smells and it performs really well on my skin so this is perfect for a casual evening out with friends so in at number five tobacco rose one fragrance I couldn't live without so I'm wearing it today today tobacco rose tomorrow who knows so tobacco rose has notes of hay beeswax rose obviously it's a beautiful fragrance it's one of my least sweet fragrances it's very rich very strong it smells resinous maybe a tiny bit smoky almost leathery in a way but just gorgeous quite savory is how I describe it so I'll be wearing that one today it lasts really really well on my skin and it's very very different and it stands out from all my other fragrances that's why I love it and although I don't reach for it as often as some of the others it is very very special to me and I don't ever want to be without it morning another day at work but it's Friday and this is an absolute must for my list it's a Bois d'Armini from Galam. So it's a recent purchase, or I say recent, uh, just a few months ago I bought it in Paris. And 
if I'm honest with you, actually it nearly didn't make the list only because I was worried about putting three from Galan in the list. But actually, if I'm being real, then I have to include all the fragrances that I consider fragrances I want in my collection for life. And this one is definitely there. So Bois d'Armony starts off with a woodsy, resinous, sweet, benzoin type smell. There's a tiny hint of floral in there, which I think might be rose. And there is a whole lot of vanilla in the base. It is the most beautiful vanilla ever. It is absolutely stunning and it lasts really well. This will last me all day long. It's an absolute must have for the list, never mind the fact that it might be slightly overcrowded with Galan. I do apologize, but I'm trying to be completely honest to myself and to you. Hi, yet yeah, so here's my number three in my list and it is Baccio di Velluto. This is from Brigantia Perfumes. Unfortunately, it's only available in the UK at the moment, but it is one of my absolute must-haves. I really love this one. It's got Ylang Ylang, Sandalwood, Ambergris, amongst others. I think there's a peppery note in there as well, if I remember correctly, but it is just beautiful. It changes on your skin. It gives you that fragrance journey that I really adore. Couldn't live without this one. So it is in the list at number three. Morning, so my number two fragrance on the list is none other than the absolutely stunning Iris Ganache from Galan. You can only get this in one shop in the whole entire world. So it's pretty damn difficult to get hold of these days. Sometimes they come up on eBay in the older bottles, the Lart et Matière, but they are ridiculously priced. So it's well worth going to Paris. Just go to Paris and get some Iris Ganache, it's gorgeous. So I've got it in my atomizer here, and this came with the B bottle included in the price. And of course, it's important that I spray it on. There's just a little bit there. Ooh, I went too high. <laughs> And then one more here, maybe one at the back. Okay, so what is Iris Ganache all about? Obviously, it's about Iris, but it's about so much more. There is a bit of bergamot in the opening, gives it just a touch of freshness, but you do immediately get that powdery, sweet Iris, kind of like a violety Iris to start with. And then you also get a sweetness. There's vanilla in there, quite a lot of vanilla actually. And you do notice the vanilla immediately, but it's not very strong to start with. The vanilla gets stronger and stronger throughout the fragrance. There's a note of white chocolate. And I think there's a bit of cinnamon in there as well. It's basically a rich and deep, sensuous, voluptuous perfume that I adore. It's by Perfume Materi Wassa. He's the head perfumer at Galan and one of my favorite uh, perfumers. That's it for number two, Iris Ganache. So here we are at my number one, number one in my must have niche list. A fragrance that I want to have forever and ever and ever. And it's Powder and Dust from SP Parfums. Oh, how I love it. Oh, Sweetie's just jumped on my lap. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> I just love it. I've spoken about it so many times, so I'm not going to say too much except that... Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry. I think I sprayed my face a little bit. It's just pretty. It smells yellow. It smells powdery. It's got mimosa in it. It's got the most gorgeous pear note in it. And we all love a good pair, don't we? So that is it. I'm going to leave it there. Do look at my review for Powder and Dust, which I will link below. See you in the next one. Bye from me, and it's bye from Sweetie. Who's that? She is happy. She just looks a bit grumpy. So it's time for me to tag someone, and I've had a little look through YouTube. Most people have already done this tag now, but... 
Ode oh, Cupcakes. You guys haven't done one just yet, and I would love to see both of yours top 10 niche for life fragrances.